Welcome everyone. This is Lisa Quattrini and welcome to my show LQ Unscripted. Well, today we have a really fabulous show for you today and I think it is really kind of much needed in today's environment and yeah. We have powerhouse Linda Mullins in the house, so everybody get ready for this. So there's actually a new trend and a new term. So Linda Mullins is what we want to call a wellpreneur. I am not going to even give it justice on what that even means. So I'm going to toss it over to Linda and tell us about this new trend in wellness that's called wellpreneur. It's like super <laughs> exciting. I can tell you. What do they say? Picasso said uh, good artists are uh, original and great artists steal, right? Yes. So, so, I, so I found the, the term wellpreneur, and it's obviously just a combination of wellness and entrepreneur. And that is really what I am. I mean, I, I'm in my second round of my second startup in the wellness space. And I think it's just a befitting title and it's all in company, encompassing in what I do. You know what I think is really great about that, too, because it really does, you know, to be an entrepreneur and to take control of your life, right? Wellness, you have to take control of your wellness because nobody else will. Right. That's right. <laughs> and there's so much about the wellness space that is we really need to be educated on. So I, for one, think that is an awesome and brilliant title. And so tell me a little bit about the work that you do in the in the wellpreneur space. Sure, sure. Um, it's multifaceted, as you can imagine. It seems like everybody's multifaceted these days, aren't we? Yes, I we mean, are. And if, we're, and if we're not, we're hiding something probably. <laughs> exactly. So there's so many, so few people just doing one thing, it seems like, especially at the advent of COVID. But, um, in the wellness space, we do integrative well-being resets and immersive experiences. Mm -hmm. And that sounds long and wordy. And what it means is I've got a team of psychologists, naturopathic doctors, and um, fitness trainers, mm -hmm. and we do resets. So how many people need a reset after the past year or two, right? I know. Right Me here. Too. I Me need too. a reset like nobody knows. Right <laughs> now, right now. So we do one day and multi-day events for leaders and for their teams so that we can reset mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Um, so, you know, we can use the word retreat, but really it's just beyond a retreat. It's not just vegging spa day by the beach. That's involved, <laughs> but it's but it's not just that. It's really taking control, as you said, yeah. of your entire wellness. And, you know, we were, you know, May was um, mental health month. Mm -hmm. And sure. um, I think that it's really important that everybody is really aware of that. And I really hope corporations start adopting more about putting investment into their employees, because we all know that if people and, you know, wellness is one of those things that's kind of like we, we haven't really come to terms about talking about it in a very productive way. It's like seen as a, a bit of a weakness, a stigma and things like that. And if we can bring that to the forefront and more and more co corporations, which I think they're kind of getting it a little bit now. They are getting it. You know, I, I, I thought it was even further along than than it had been. You know, it's, it's a little bit more aware specifically since covid so many people have PTSD and trauma surrounding this entire, uh, really 18 months is what we're approaching, right? right. So um, the mental wellness piece, yeah, is still, I wouldn't say it's necessarily taboo, mm -hmm. but it is lagging behind where it really needs to be. Um, it actually, mental wellness, you know, big deal. It's, it's a um, part of the burnout problem. Mm -hmm. It's mental exhaustion based from your work. Right? right? So exhaustion and burnout, burnout is exhaustion from work, that became a diagnosis code exactly two years ago in May 2019 before COVID. Interesting. And you know what that means? Heart disease, diabetes, yeah. and burnout. Right. Right? Right, because we don't take enough time to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. because it's we live in a society where you just go, 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 go. And so hopefully that will sort of like normalize itself over time mm -hmm. and, and we'll see. Are you seeing a difference in, um, so if it was diagnosed two years ago as burnout, are you, what are you seeing in, in the marketplace? Are you seeing that companies are just like, okay, we know it exists, we'll deal with it if it becomes too much of a problem or? 
I, I, I think that I'm seeing the interest, right, which th with the CHROs and the HR departments and the benefits organizations, I'm seeing the interest, but I think it's just slow to move. Mm. And that's a challenge because, as you know, we'll talk about it in a little bit, our human resource is the most valuable thing that we have in any organization, right? So the expectations that maybe you and I possibly in some of your audience grew up with, which was, you know, oh, you're taking your day off? You know, it's the end of the month or, you know, whatever the quotas are, especially if you're in a, a producing or performing position. But um, I think it's more, um, more pervasive now and more on the top of everybody's tongue um, even though they're not really doing it, I had a uh, discussion with one with one of the um, one of the large consulting firms. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, very large consulting firms are like it's not anywhere in our language at all. Right, right. and and I just in I just uh, was involved in a well being at work conference, which is an international conference. Right, and they they they're in their sixth year of international conferences in Singapore in the US, in the UK, in everywhere. Mm. And so that, I think that's a small kind of, not cult-like, but a small segment mm. of the industry that is really going after it and what can I do? And some of the, let's face it, some of the top companies to work for are tackling it in a better way. That is really great. And it all also comes down to culture building. I've always talked about this, you know, with through the years in, in um, my corporate world about you build really innovation and you, you can really change the game when you have the people and you have points of view and you can do the culture building. So I encourage everyone, audience, if you're listening to this, you need to talk to your HR department and contact Linda Mullins and it's worthwhile to have at least an initial introductory session on do you have burnout I mean you first have to check on your business and understand like what does your environment even look like you know how are your people feeling surveys let's be honest people aren't going to be too honest on surveys you have to really get in and start talking to people right right I think so and and to your point a moment ago it depends on the culture doesn't it mm -hmm. I mean, there are some organizations over the last few years have reached, you know, received some very nice accolades because they're transparent mm -hmm. about taking a, a mental wellness day, a mental health break, a sabbatical, whatever is really needed for that individual to, to feel better and feel restored yeah. um, and get their head on straight, so to speak, right? right. So I think it's a culture thing. Um, and I was going to ask you about that. About yeah. What's, what, what are some of your favorite or most admired cultural um, applications or cultural beliefs that some of your best companies do? Okay. So I've, I've actually been very fortunate in my life. I've been in this um, eight, HR outsourcing consulting type world for the past 25 years. So I've really have had the benefit of seeing all different cultures. And I'm in awe, I have to tell you, Linda, I am just in awe in some of the cultures that I walk in. And there's a common thread you see in all of them, who does it right and who doesn't do it right. Mm -hmm. And the common thread that I notice on the companies that do it right are the ones that are very inclusive and they have a very, very, very diverse population. And they really spend a lot of time on thoughtfulness and collaboration, and they want to hear everyone's points of view. Now, that does have its pros and cons because most companies have to move fast, right? You have to move fast. You have to get work done. You have to get things done. But if you could take a moment and just slow down and listen to what other people have to say and say, what kind of application could that really have? And what would some of the outcomes of those things be? And if you really kind of just brainstormed and whiteboarded that out, you would, I, I'm telling you, nine out of 10 times, you're going to have a different outcome than what you thought you would have in that meeting. And then what it also does, it indoctrinates a culture that really everybody's working for the greater good because companies have to, I wrote an article about this about in 2016, that's how long ago it was, that companies need to have soul. And if you don't have soul 
and you don't have people that believe in something bigger than themselves and that they can accomplish something that is bigger than themselves that will make an impact to humanity, will make an impact to society, will make an impact. And you can make money. You actually make more money. That's right. That's the you funny do. thing about it, right? If you do the right thing, you actually make more money. Money follows. Money, The money mm -hmm. will follow. You should never worry about the money because it always comes. And that's what I'm in on. And I've seen some companies that do that really well. And you know right off the back, as soon as you walk in, you can feel it. It's almost like, not to be too cliche, but you like you can feel the love and the acceptance. It's palpable, yes. right? It is. Same with when you enter an organization where there's backbiting and strife and stress and unrest, mm -hmm. right? There's dis-ease, which really becomes disease. It does. Yes, people are down. They're not mm -hmm. talking. They're not collaborating. They're not sharing of ideas. They think they have these, you know, trade secrets that the CIA is going to come after them <laughs> if they let them <laughs> let them out in the meeting. And, you know, they want to take credit for work they haven't done. And it's really that drastic that, that you see. And I'm really hoping um, we see more of that because if a Here's my take on it. If you're gonna, if you want to be relevant in this in the space today, I don't care what your industry is, and you want to make money, you better get on the bandwagon of culture. You'd better. I mean, yeah. did you hear the very first podcast? I think that left out a little over a year ago when COVID, when the lo the lockdown came, right? Yeah. Was um, everybody was most conscientious or most concerned about what companies were doing with their employees? Yes. They were. It was highlighted in a major way, right? So, and I honestly believe that some of the, the kind of the lagging of opening back up and letting people in, it, it's not just um, consumer confidence or brand or whatever, but they really needed, they did need to look like they were taking care of their employees first. Yes, they did. And it, and it can't just be a game, right? It can't just be for show. It has to be consistent and it has to be ongoing because the moment companies do it and say, okay, checkbox, right? You're going to start seeing turnover, 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 turnover. So um, that, that would be sort of my two cents of what I see in winning companies, companies that win versus ones that don't win. Mm -hmm. And ha and how do we do that? But everybody was grappling for the past 18 months. They've been grappling on what do we do and how do we do it remotely? And yeah. What do we do to en not only engage our people, to make sure they're not falling out at home, essentially, right? Because there's right. so much trauma and the impact of the trauma hasn't even been seen yet. I, I totally agree. And then you... you compli further complicate that because you think about the ones... I mean, I'm lucky. I, my kids are... You know, my daughter's grown, so it's just me. But can you imagine husband, dog, family, kids, homeschool? I mean, I don't even know how they're holding it together. I don't either. And, and you know, there's so many things that skyrocketed during COVID, yeah. right? And domestic violence skyrocketed. Yeah, it sure and, did. And, you know, even... And I don't know if you remember the first few weeks, it was so nice seeing the families out walking the trail or walking along the neighborhood because there was lockdown. So everybody's all together. So it was very kind of heartwarming. And then later as it ensued, and then it was 12 weeks and then 16 weeks and then a few months, it um, then the numbers started coming out and the stress started being yes. more apparent. And so with families that close knit, I mean, we're not little house on the prairie, right? Right. You've got five laptops and eight phones <laughs> yes. and you're all in a close quarters trying to get your stuff done. And you're, and while they love each other without a doubt, yeah. you know, to be in close quarters 24 seven or close to that, it's stressful. It's very stressful. Yeah. And I agree. I don't think we've seen the, really the outcome of all of that. But the good news is I think as um, more and more people become aware of it and they're not ashamed of it, I think shame is the thing. You can't, people, don't be ashamed. Uh, mental health is a real thing. Everybody has it. Everyone has ups and downs. I don't care what kind of life you live, you're going to experience up and downs. And um, that's the time when you need to reach out and talk to someone mm -hmm. and because a lot of people are going through the same things. So that, Absolutely. And, and I think... That can't be stressed enough. I'm from yeah. a military family. Mm. 
my father was in two wars and three of my four brothers served as well. So thank you for everybody who is a first responder, military, paramedics, cops, firemen, everybody. And frankly, retailer, almost everybody yeah. is a first responder now, or at least on the front lines, right? So that stress and anxiety that you deal with every day, specifically our military, the, uh, the, the suicide mm. rates and attempts are just it's unconscionable to think about and it's very disturbing and so there are a lot there's a lot of support surrounding that but if you can imagine putting ourselves in their place the machismo that often comes with a male dominated space you know whether it's the armed forces or whether it's um the the police policing industry right industry um it, it, they don't often seek help yeah and that's a problem we need them to seek help and so anybody who's a mental health advocate is you know waving the banner and i am too and i'm i can tell you go to lindamullins.com or go to uh, inspired leadership group and I, I mean it we we have a team of psychologists and we're working on something that we believe will be a part of the solution which is um, which is kind of some mental wellness on demand mm -hmm. that's not telemedicine no, oh, telemedicine. that's cool. Yeah, because, you know, mano a mano is yeah. kind of how a lot of people like to receive coaching and counseling. But whichever you prefer, yeah, just pick up the phone. There's so much available now to, if you're stressed out or if you need somebody to talk to, you can do it via text, you can do it via laptop. Um, nobody has to know who you are. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you don't have insurance, there are, you know, sliding scales and very minimal cost to just reach out um, because you're worth it. You're definitely worth it. So um, no shyness there, just reach out. You know what I want to talk about too? I think this is so cool. This is so cool. Audience, you're going to really love this because it's a pretty heavy subject, but and not a lot of people get involved in it, but Linda Mullins does. So you have a passion project, yeah. and I, I just think it's, so courageous that you're doing it so I'm not going to take your thunder yeah. so share your pa passion project with our audience sure yes it's called the anti-slavery alliance and you know it went through a few iterations of the name but it is essentially an umbrella organization offering collaboration and trying to achieve uh, more resources for the anti-trafficking environment and so I was led to serve uh, a nonprofit in San Antonio. I did it virtually, of course, mm -hmm. for strategy and business development. And I did that, of course, gratis, and help, to help them grow and garner some funds. And then all, all of a sudden, I was meeting uh, organization after organization here in Dallas that were in the anti-trafficking space. And, mm. it's, and it's primarily focused on sex trafficking, but some of the organizations are human trafficking in general because there's so many so much slave labor out there that's I mean, so true it's yes. i mean it's it's, it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing more is. than you can imagine and i'm telling you uh i talk about this with the organizations that are involved they're not member organizations but kind of member organizations under the umbrella right we figure if we can combine the the four-pronged approach which is um a, awareness education right awareness and education we need more awareness because we don't know how heinous we know how heinous it is we don't know how pervasive it is and it's happening right in, under our nose yes and so there are a lot of organizations in the space serving and their boots on the ground we've got ex-military special ops guys who do the rescue mm. we've got um, other organizations who do the uh, education and awareness in schools or foster care or the at-risk populations as well as corporations right yeah and because there's some very um very high profile organizations like hospitality for instance mm. it's a i mean they've got protocols and education they must have right to raise because guess where some traffic people go through right, right? exactly imagine that think about it yeah. yeah and then there's the uh then there's the the rescue the restoration and the restoration includes um, a year or two of counseling services or equine therapy or whatever methodology a nonprofit already has that's already doing the good work on the ground, um, 
those we can kind of direct the services to each of those so it's like a full life cycle yes you know yeah. so it, it doesn't just rescue the if it doesn't just identify the problem and rescue the people it actually brings them all the way through uh, recovery, which yes. I think is is key, yes. and I hey, hey audience, I get it's a heavy subject, and oftentimes heavy subjects people don't want to listen, right. right? They don't want to get involved. It's too much. Right. It's draining. But um, this is really a well um, worthwhile organization to get involved in, and if you can't handle the whole full life cycle, I'm sure there's a little bit of it you can do. Yeah. So you should. Where would should they contact you? Yeah, uh, contact me because, to be frank, we're in the formation stages. Because and and I didn't want to just do one more nonprofit. It's really not about that. Right. I'm a you know I'm a businesswoman and I worked and consulted with several nonprofits, but I know that they can use support and strategy and business acumen, and they don't all have the bandwidth to get the larger funds that they need. Right. So right. they can contact me directly because we're still in the formation of the organization, but all the organizations that are boots on the ground doing the hard work and doing the restoration. And then to your to your uh, arena, they, we also have organizations within the scope that do online STEM education or online workforce training that's non-traditional education because as a trafficked victim, they come out of this lifestyle and hopefully stay out. Yeah. Because there's a high, say the word recidivism. <laughs> <laughs> I never say that word. But th there's a high return rate to the life because that's what they know mentally and emotionally. And they're trauma bonded to they're it. Tra they are. They're they, trauma bonded to they it. They are. And it's, right. and it's very disturbing. So if we can get them safe, in a place to live, which is what a lot of these programs have, safe houses and places to live, while they get kind of comfortable and counseling and kind of begin to know who they are again, then they can we can pave the way for them to get educated so that then they have more than a living wage job. Right. Exactly. I think that's fabulous. Yeah. I think that's just phenomenal. I'm so proud that you're doing that. Oh, thanks. I'm just I'm just grateful that I was exposed to these organizations so that I could kind of, you know, brainstorm with them to see how we can do collaborative efforts. Yes. Um, because it shouldn't be splintered. And I've talked to dozens of people in space. I just got off a call a little, a little while ago with an organization in San Antonio. And they're like, it's splintered. Yeah. And everybody thinks they're competing for the same money. And that's, you're competing against yourself, but let's let's kumbaya, let's get together. Yeah, right. And you're doing this piece and I'm doing this piece. Can we come together and refer each other? And I know a lot of the organizations are referring to each other, but it's very fractured. It is very fractured because, you know, this is what I've learned and I've done a lot of nonprofit in, 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 my, in my life. And oftentimes people get into nonprofit because they're passionate. That doesn't mean that they understand the framework or the strategy or the business skills on how to put it all together so they're doing the best that they can but they can do more if they partner up and they collaborate and that's where i think people in the business world can step in and help a lot of these nonprofits because they really are doing if you see the amount of hours they put into these things and if they could just get a framework and some structure and some strategy, they could go so much further. So we're calling you. We're calling yes. all of you to come help. That's right. <laughs> so we expect high results. <laughs> we're reeling you in. We're reeling we you are. in. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what about you? I mean, and yeah. I don't segue from a heavy subject to a, a lighter one, but yeah. what about you? What about passion projects for you? Is is this one of them or what? What really kind of trips your trigger and yeah, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just so many things. So, I've um, I've always had passion projects um, my entire life, and just I think different things that present themselves to me are certain things that I get involved in. So. Throughout my life, I mean, I've always had a corporate job, and within that corporate job, I've always taken looked through the lens of how to uh, make things better, or mentor people, and grow people, and and really try to build careers and things like that. So that that in itself was a little bit of a passion project. But then, as I met so many fabulous people through my journey, and just found out what they were interested in, whether it was like animal rights or animal rescue or humanitarian issues or 
um, well, you know, getting people back to work or dress for success and just all, uh, just all, too many things to mention, yeah. just a whole host of things. And then, um, you know, just as of late, really November of last year, I thought, you know, because I, I knew I wanted to do something, but I wanted it to be more meaningful, mm. right? Yes. Because I've done, I could do a lot of different things, but I wanted to do my own thing. So um, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to create a platform and um, allow these amazing people to tell their stories. And if we can help somebody and someone's listening to it, and we can make it into a thing. And I know that it takes time and we're building on it, but it's been, I have to say, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. And I've met some of the most amazing people I probably would have never met before. That's awesome. And so I would say this is probably one of my favorites so far. I is, can imagine. Yeah. I'm not far behind you, sister. Yeah, I love it. I'm not yeah. far behind you. It's it's a, I think whatever your passion is, yeah. whether it's arts or politics or business or mental wellness and overall wellness with everybody, right? I want everybody to be overall well because yes. I came from a place where I've, I've been very healthy. I've been very fortunate, but I came from a place where I overcame quite a lot of things. Yeah. And um, I mean, just... Many, much adversity like many people that are listening, right? Like all of us. Yeah. We've all got a story. We've all got a book or two in us yes. um, of what we've overcome. And everybody's got a story. And I'd like more and more people to end in a, in a healthier way and getting rid of their, their stuff. Yeah, you have to unpack it. You do. And that's what I'm hoping most of all is through the storytelling, they unpack it. So then what was really interesting, because I had – no rhyme, no reason of how I was going to form this thing. I was just, I didn't even know how to do a podcast. I would just, well, let's see who's interested in doing interviewing. Right. But now what I found is there are so many different um, interesting topics that I'm going to start segmenting things into like art and music, health and wellness, fitness, you know, whatever the topics are, and then build like an umbrella brand over that. And then that way, if people are interested in certain topics, and I like to do a lot of field work, I've done some field work, I want to do more of that. So it's just been a blast. And, you know, um, and everyone has said yes. I haven't had anyone that told me no That's so good. far. So I guess I'm pretty either convincing or they feel sorry for me. I'm uh, not sure which I'm one. thinking you're pretty convincing. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's a great platform. So yeah. you, you, you get to deliver to the audience things that are um, interesting yeah. and deep and meaningful mm -hmm. and some that are a little more uh not not quite so frivolous i don't think you're doing really frivolous things right yeah no yeah. and and i never really wanted it to be about me right. i just i wanted it to be about the person telling the story and if i can be the facilitator of that if i can be the guide to that that's really what the goal was and um I tell you, I just, more and more people are contacting me now and saying, can I do a show? I have something to say. And I don't turn anybody down. So. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Good. I'm open to everything. That's awesome. Yeah. I'll see. I'll be sure to refer you, but you won't have yeah. a problem at all. Yeah. I yeah. I'll take referrals. <laughs> I'm not shy. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's, it, we, we need some more positive, uplifting, intrigue, yes. you know, uh, meaningful. Meaningful is a thing. And, and you said that a few minutes ago for the first time. And and isn't that what we're all going for? You know, there's this, this saying, you know, I'd rather be uh, significant than just successful. Yes. And I want to make impact. Yeah. And that's what I want to do. And I was fortunate enough to do that um, in my la as a wellpreneur in the last organization I owned, which was you lived in at the wellness retreat for four weeks or more. Mm. So it was a life changer. And my team was just able to help people transform their lives mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and physically. Because yeah. it was a lot of workouts. <laughs> um, a lot of workouts per day. But the impact. So I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a hunger for making more impact like you do. That's great. And what the other thing that I want to do is also not let this be a one and done thing. I want to follow the stories. So I want to follow your story and the people that I've interviewed so we can say, okay, we started here. So let's see what progress we made. Cause I think that's important too. Yes. That'll be terrific. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I love it. Who does it? Like, is it I 60 know. minutes and yeah. Sunday morning, a lot of the show, but I love that because yeah. then, um, then your audience gets to see the sequel. We can, and there's so many things we could do behind the scenes. I mean, I could go on forever, but um, it's it's just been 
really great and mm-hmm. i'm so thankful people like you even want to come on the show oh thank you yeah. so much well you're i think the behind the scenes for you won't be too much of a hardship you're going to yeah. come to a wellness retreat oh perfect yeah. yes <laughs> and in. get your sessions with the psychologist the naturopath and kind of just reboot it's all about rebooting and yeah. and allowing the white space on your calendar to stay white space yeah don't fill it up that's important right? Oh, I can't wait to do it. Yeah, Yeah, we'll we'll do that, and then we'll show the audience. Yes, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. It's been such a pleasure. Again, we have Linda uh, Mullins here, who is a wellpreneur. I have to learn that uh, terminology. (laughs) I love it. I think it's brilliant. And um, do you have a website? We should leave people with your website. Sure. Um, The easiest one is lindamullins.com, but the one with more information is inspiredleadershipgroup.com. And you're welcome to call us to 707-722-7032. All right, people, get involved. Make it a great day. Let's change humanity. Thank you. Oh, um, I always forget to say this, and my friends always tell me, you have to like and subscribe so people will actually uh, (laughs) share my videos. So subscribe, like, comment. Um, If you do like them, uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a great day.